30,000 milliwatts of power. Broadcasting almost across the valley. AM 1620, the Eagle Radio Network. Hey, good morning, and welcome to the Saturday Morning CO and Econo Man Radio Show. Good morning. And Merry Christmas, Dennis. Hey, Merry Christmas to you, too. I just want to be the first one to say that uh, I initiated giving you a Christmas card this morning. Yes, you did, and, and I had <laughs> guilt just pour out of me that I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it was about 30 seconds ago. Well, hey, uh, just want to make some announcements for uh, the uh, college here. Uh, as you know, uh, for those students listening, today is the official day of uh, finals exam. Happy finals. Yeah, it, it's uh, exams, uh, final exams is through the 15th to the 21st. And uh, this is a plug for the Student Government Association. There's free coffee at Ooh. the Menifee Valley Campus. And that will be available on December 18th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the quad. So if you want to get pumped up, get a jolt before an exam, stop by, and they'll have some coffee and donuts. At warm warm caffeine and liquid. And if you happen to have a final exam over the San Jacinto campus, the coffee and donuts will be available on December 20th uh, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. as well. So I encourage all students to stop by, get to know your student body reps. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And don't don't bring any of those donuts over here because I don't eat them. <laughs> we won't talk about the donuts again. <laughs> I, I just haven't caught you on camera yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, the uh, the college will be closed winter break, so if any of you uh, want to come on down, the campus will not be available. It's closed December twenty fourth through January eighth. The campus will reopen on January ninth. But but we'll be here. We'll, we'll be, here be here on the air. We're uh, we're running our shows and um, we'll be so pitching forth and so on. Sleeping outside. Well, Dennis will be. I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll be inside. And also, uh, just one more thing. Uh, first day of classes uh, begins spring 2013. The first uh, day is uh, start time. Dennis is January 22nd at 8 a.m. and the semester ends on January 22nd, 10 p.m. <laughs> That's going to be a short semester. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I just want to thank uh, Mount, uh, Mount San Jacinto Community College for letting Dennis and I uh, do the show. Um, we, we appreciate the time that the college gives us, and just want you to know that uh, Dennis and I volunteer our time to come down every Saturday morning uh, for an hour and uh, goof off. Just for you. Just for you. And uh, that said, I think we have a guest this morning, uh, Tim Gillette. We do, and he's going to come on uh, after the first break. We've got uh, a topic we're going to cover first this morning is marketing and how to brand your business. So this is something that uh, that most people uh, do a little bit uh, backwards, and I want to teach the right way to do this. A lot of people spend their time, if you're thinking about starting a business, and, and as you know, the theme of our show is uh, helping people who are trying to grow their business or start one. And uh, one of the topics that we'll cover with uh, with Tim later on, too, when he comes on board, is that we will uh, be talking about uh, some entrepreneurs that are kind of forced entrepreneurs. They can't find a job, and maybe they're lucky and have some kind of a 401K or something, and they're trying to figure out what to invest in, and, and what do I do? Well, here's what you do. Instead of just coming up with a name right away, that seems to be the, the, the popular thing to do, it is important to instead uh, first come up with your, your vision and statement, uh, and your, excuse me, your mission and your vision statement, and uh, un- know what you want to do, and then envision your company in the next uh, like 20 years from now, and see where you think you would like it to be. Uh, once you get a picture for that, then you'll understand where you want your business to, to go. So let's say you're thinking of uh, opening up some kind of a, a, a restaurant. Donut and, shop. Uh, donut shop. Okay, let's go with donut shop. And uh, you plan on, in the next uh, 10 years or so, uh, adding, I don't know, Chinese food or something else to it. Then you want to make sure your name is going to cover you for many years to come. 
and not uh, not limit yourself. So you know you try to think of some kind of a um, uh, an idea where your company will be in a in a while, ten, fifteen, twenty years, and then instead of picking a name at that time, you want to get a general idea of a name, and then go on and do a search for what URLs are available because the internet is such a big deal right now that and will, I think it'll continue to be uh, unless like we lose all power in the entire world and can't connect anywhere but uh but with the internet being such a big deal your name needs to be able to be available so uh like branding my own uh, the Saturday morning radio show and Saturday morning uh CEO all those things are all branded and I made sure that those were available as a as a website so you want to find out uh, not only is it available but are other things available near it so uh, in other words uh, maybe a misspelling of your name because some people would uh, type in a misspelling you don't want that to go to somebody else's website you want it to uh, come to yours so you want to reserve some other names that are either similar or common misspellings of your name uh, before you then reserve all the URLs uh, if you're and we won't go into entities today because we've done that on other shows but uh, whether you're doing a, a corporation or a fictitious business name, you'll either check with the county or your state uh, secretary of state and uh, make sure that the name is available there as well. And then you uh, reserve those names. Uh, at that point is when you want to start looking at your logo. Uh, when you are coming up with a logo and kind of a theme for what you want your company's uh, paperwork and website and everything else to look like uh, you should do some research on on different colors uh, did you know that colors bring about different emotions yeah I'm seeing red right now oh uh oh I'm seeing red on that the bow that's on your yeah mic. I got a red bow on my mic is that uh, red supposed to make you angry but a bow kind of makes me happy so it's, it's a conflicting feeling that I'm having right now just staring like, uh, at the red bow a conflicting uh, donut shop and Chinese food I, I'm not too sure what kind of a uh, logo you'd come up with that <laughs> well uh, you know what I came up with that because that there there's one that actually exists uh, not far from my house so what <laughs> what, 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 what's their logo uh, good point I don't know uh, donuts and uh, and Chinese food. Chinese that rolls. <laughs> I think so. Chinese that rolls. Yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> Roll in the dough, nut. I don't know. That's my little. Oh, you're being silly. All right. I think so. I think I, so. I, I think I got it. So you have a logo that uh, relates to your company. Yeah. So you come and, up with um, colors too that would kind of color scheme bring around the uh, the feel and also shapes. Uh, if you have a common shape, just like you know the McDonald's has the. Uh, the golden arches you see those two yellow things it either means oh my gosh i can't stop there i will gain too much weight or ooh yum i'm going to go eat there that is so strange because every time i drive past mcdonald's and i see that m do you know what i think about what do you think about i think about m being the 26th letter of the alphabet well that's <laughs> that's cuz you're weird <laughs> no it's the 13th letter of the alphabet you fell for that one uh, yeah i i i see it I don't know. I, I, if I were smarter, <laughs> I could have picked that up. <laughs> anyway, so the other thing about your logo is I've got to tell you, all the consulting I do, <clears throat> people try to put about 50 million uh, aspects of their business into their logo. Keep it simple. Cut it down. Don't make it so so that you spend an hour looking at a logo to read everything that's on it. Make it very, very simple. Uh, coming up with some kind of a slogan, some kind of a theme. Uh, I think that's uh, that's kind of the gist of, of the pattern that you wanted to set up as you get your business going. But don't don't get solid with a name until you know that it's available on the Internet because that's always depressing well, isn't, if it's not. Uh, when you come up with a logo, this is, now that I'm thinking about this, this is a lot of, lot of work. Uh, you got to come up with a logo. you got to consider shapes. you got to consider a color. And then you got to consider a theme. So when someone sees your trademark or your signature logo, those three things come out. I mean, right. And then, then there's a message, right? Or is that message within the theme? Uh, there's a little bit of a message there. If you look at our uh, Saturday morning CEO, for instance, 
uh, our logo has uh, Saturday and morning. Those two words are kind of uh, triangulated with each other. There's just a simple little style with it, little shape that we try to follow. And the the background on the website uh, has kind of a beach scene. And in my book, the Saturday Morning CEO, it talks about uh, during that strategic planning meeting that you have with yourself, that you have a little bit of a hammock time, you know, where you just kind of relax and and reboot and rethink. So that that background picture kind of has to do with the whole theme of of resetting and getting yourself ready for the next week. So yeah, there was a lot of thought. I mean, I know you know me pretty well, so you may have just assumed there was no thought put into that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, thank you for that interpretation, because uh, when I do see the umbrella and the briefcase and the beach, I'm thinking, man, it's time to boogie board. There you go. That's good. So I'm I'm not really, um, it's probably just me. I'm not sitting down and thinking strategically how I'm going to uh, figure out the balance of the day, but... um, I understand now you want a relaxing atmosphere, you want it to be fun, you right. want it to be colorful, right? and you got the briefcase with you. Well, and, and remember, our target audience is, is business folks who are normally uh, 25 hours a day, eight days a week. See, I threw some numbers back at you. Uh, <laughs> Let me compute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, they don't take the time to do that. Now, you're an economist, so you probably actually take a little time to relax <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, I go to the beach, and my first instinct is to draw a graph in the sand. You know, most people produce sand castles. <laughs> That's good. And I'm, I'm, I'm still looking for that fiscal cliff on the beach or that fiscal dune. You know? Oh, very good, very good. Hey, speaking of uh, fiscal cliff and uh, a, 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 and implying uh, end of the world and all that kind of fun stuff that's supposed to be coming on, uh, Tim and I are going to be, uh, Tim and you and I are all going to are going to be talking about some of the uh, end of the English? W- what, what, no. What, what, what are you talking about? Tim and I and you and the, pronoun you and I as a personal pronoun? What, what? Well, you know, the grammar police took the day off today, so they're not in the studio, so it's just letting us kind of run wild. <laughs> <laughs> would, that, would that be the APA format yeah. or MLA? <laughs> oh, my goodness, oh, yeah. All right. uh, both of us are working on a degree right now, I think, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're too much into that. Hey, let's uh, let's bring Tim on the air, and maybe he can bring some uh, sense to this nonsense today that we are going with. Uh, Tim, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh my gosh, we can hear you great! Yeah. And, well, and your I, picture I, looks great here on Skype, by the way. Yeah, it looks. I'm like... glad to have these great tools of, of, of Skype to to be able to work with like this. It really makes uh, life easy. Oh, but... it's absolutely. Hey, we need to. Uh, we need to tell our folks uh, how important you are. Uh, I am so glad that you're on our show. You are the uh, the rock star coach, and that that is your theme. We were just talking about themes, uh, and you're the rock star coach. You put on uh, events all around the country, and uh, you and I have uh, met each other at some uh, at some conferences where we are trying to always improve our skills and. And uh, you want to tell, I know we're kind of off topic, but you want to talk for just a second about uh, your branding and what thoughts went into that. We're we're bringing you on a little bit. We've got about five minutes before the break. We're bringing you on early because we like you. <laughs> no, I, I, I think we're bringing him on early because he, he he's a good-looking rock star. He is, he yeah. He looks like a rock star. I thought you brought me on early because I could count and I understand my numbers. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. Ouch, ouch. That hurt both of my feelings. <laughs> well, at, least, at least you've got two of them. Yeah. My oh, wife man. says I don't have any. <laughs> so what, what are your thoughts about uh, branding when you chose uh, Rockstar Coaching? Well, you know, when I chose to be this uh, th- this for coaching, um, I had been working several years in the, you know, just goofing off. So I was able to grow my hair back long, look like a hippie. And when I was going to go out and get into speaking, I was fortunate enough to know Zig Ziglar personally. And, you know, it was one of those things that I ran to Zig and told him I was going to do it. And I said, I better get a haircut and get a suit and look professional again. And Zig just he did one of these circling things with his finger. And he says to me, Tim, work with this hippie thing. Wow. And, and I had to think about it for a while and go branding, you know what I mean? Because I'd never thought about branding until one of my coaches said, you need to find a domain name that tells everybody who you are. Uh huh. And literally, rocker, that's how I built the business. Rockerlifecoach.com was available. Wow. It's not like we made some branding. It started because that was the domain name that was available. <laughs> That's that's smart though, yeah. I I mean you chuckle, but 
that's truly what people need to do nowadays. And, you know, I, I get more and more times that people go, man, yeah, that's a great concept. That's a great brand. You know, it was simple, and um, it was just trying to come up with a name for myself. It wasn't like it was, you know, um, it wasn't rocket science. For me, I loved rock music. Uh, you know, I'd worked around it in some forms and fashions. Um, I looked like I was a rocker stuck in the 80s, so, I mean, hey, it worked. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, well you you definitely looked the part. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, hey, we've got a couple minutes before we go to break, so let's uh, let's give the, uh, the folks out there a uh, kind of a teaser of, of what we want to talk about, kind of set the mode. Man, yeah, we you know we we kind of batted things ideas on this show. You know, earlier this week we we're talking about man, the end of the world's next week. You know, it's that's right. Of twenty one twelve, you know, got so my bags packed, ready to go. <laughs> the world's gonna end. Why not create a new world? Right. I think, uh, you know, what we got to do when we come back from the breaks, we tell everybody how we create our new world, because 2013 is a brand new world. It is that way every year. We just seem to forget that. So we're going to talk about how we create a brand new world in 2013. Hey, I think that's important, and, and we've got some brand new, uh, you and I talked on the phone, too, about the fact we've got brand new entrepreneurs out there that are kind of just thrown into the mix, and they don't know what to do. They're out of a job. They've hunted really, really hard. Uh, and if they're lucky, they've got uh, some money in their 401k or an uncle or somebody that will help them out and get started. But they don't know what to do. They're brand new with this. So this whole idea of uh, uh, starting a new a new world uh, has a lot of people in it that uh, are brand new to the business world, too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know what I mean? Whether it's tragedy that got you into it or whether it's necessity. I will tell you stories from my past of necessity that got me into being an entrepreneur. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, we're going to be glad glad to talk to you about that, and uh, and we look forward to that definitely. And what? Uh, t- tell us, did you think about um, when you were doing your branding? Did you think ahead too of, of what you wanted to do with with that brand? Um, you know, think ahead ten, fifteen years or so. Did you get that picture in your mind? Uh, when I first created it, no. Uh, mm-hmm. Over the past uh, year and a half is when I've started to really think five and ten years down the road. And okay. uh, today we'll share with that how how I actually had to learn that from talking to another coach of mine just a, just a, about six months ago. Oh, good. Okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll definitely do that. We're going to go to break here, and then we will come back. And I I'm excited. You and I have never had time to talk about all that, so I'm looking forward to it. So uh, we're going to go to break, and we'll be right back. Cinderella's dream comes true because the glass slipper fits. It fits. In our world, the right fit can be just as important, especially when it comes to car seats. Always choose a car seat that's the right fit for your child's age and size to make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely every time. How beautiful, dear. Thank you. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. This message has been brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Chris, can you put the video game controller down for a second? I can talk and play. Oh, I'm totally annihilating this punk kid in Nebraska. I just feel like you're not acting like a grown-up in our relationship. M2, M2! Well, you know, you still ride your skateboard to work, there's the comic book collection, the race car bed. Look, I'm young at heart, but I put money to my 401k every paycheck. I picked up a few savings tips at feedthepig.org. I have control of my financial life now, and that feels pretty grown up. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. For free ideas and easy tips on ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. So, I bet I look like a grown-up to you now. Well, except for the footy pajamas, I'd have to agree. 
This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Saturday Morning CEO and Econo Man radio show. We have Tim Gillette on the line, and we are so glad to have him as our special guest today. You there, Tim? Yes, I Excellent. am still here. Well, thanks for not leaving us on break just because we can't add or talk or use any correct grammar or math or anything here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I gotta, te- you know what I mean. I if, if, mean. if there's going to be a crew of people to screw up something, just saying, I'm glad to join in. Good, we're glad to have you as part of our uh, show today. Yeah, we could always need an additional coach for that uh, end of the business. <laughs> so, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us, uh, tell us your story? Well, you know, I grew up in the mountains of Pennsylvania, and um, probably the best thing that wanted me to ever be an entrepreneur was watching my father get laid off time and time again. Hmm. And I remember, I remember the middle of the night coming downstairs because he worked second shift and watching him pull up in his truck and walk in the door and tell my mom, yeah, I got laid off. They're closing the doors on that company, too. Wow. I mean, he went from company to company that just closed their doors one after another. I, and I just, a I, lot I, of people I was can relate. I said, man, I'm never going to let that happen to me. No employer is ever going to control my life. Because I watched us do without things as a family because, you know what I mean, it was tough finding tough finding jobs for him, you know, and, and I never wanted that to, to control my life. Now that, that, uh, what, what age were you at that time, Tim? Um, I had to be, it was had to be 19, between 76 and 78, I want to say. Um, I would have been all oh, right around 10 to 12 years old. Uh, well, you were, uh, you had a sharp mind at that time to be thinking that far ahead. Yeah, and, well, and, you know, we lived in the country, so it's not like, you know, where now I live in the city of Dallas. And we're, you know, city life, you can think every corner, yeah, there's a great entrepreneur idea. Up there, your entrepreneur idea is where you had a grocery store, you had a beauty salon, or you had a body shop or a garage. That was it in our town, so you know what I mean? Yeah. There was nothing else that was entrepreneur, really, to think about it. Everything was done in, outside and brought in. Or you had a farm. That was the other one. You had a farm. I mean, because I lived amongst five farms at the time as a kid. So um, I went from that. I mean, because that really drove me a lot. And my early uh, early teens and stuff, I worked several jobs in restaurants and and things. It's when I got out of high school that uh, I decided I wanted to go into cars because that was what I wanted to do. And I got into the auto body industry and the car wash industry, so to say, uh-huh. working for everything from car dealers to car washes to body shops to um, to where in 1990, 92 it was, I was driving truck for a living and uh, had a seizure. I Ooh, got a form of epilepsy, which took away my commercial driving license. And I had to come up with something. I had to feed my family. I had a wife and a daughter and i had to feed them and i was in that same spot where my father was in the 1970s where i had to come home and go man i've got no job yeah how am i going to feed my family and that's where you know i said born out of necessity i had learned to wash cars or learned to do paint stuff but you couldn't do paint on the street so what i did was is i went and knocked on people's doors and said man i'll wash your car i'll detail your car i'll you know polish your car i'll wax your car and I started a whole business out of it in 1992, and um, I walked away from that business in 1998. Where I, and when I did, I had two body shops and uh, two body shops and a mobile detailing unit. So, wow! Um, and I walked away from it because of like you know the th- other things that are unexpected in life that we don't it, we don't expect uh, divorce to happen. I ended up getting right. divorced and mm-hmm. losing everything I had. You know, and, uh, you know, at the time it was depressing. And we look at, just like many people you're talking about today, have lost jobs um, that are out of necessity now looking to maybe I should be, be an entrepreneur. As out of necessity, I had to recreate myself again. So I left and I moved west. I came to Dallas, Texas, to where my brother could get me a job with something until I could figure something out, um, which I ended up in, in here in 2000 and. Two, I ended up uh, starting another car wash business here in Dallas, but I went on it with a different angle of mobile car washes where we would go to office buildings and, you know, all those 
executives, while they were sitting inside all day, their cars were sitting in the parking garage, and we'd wash their cars and detail their cars while they were in the in the office all day. And uh, I ended up five trucks with that, and I sold out of that in 2004 when I decided I was done washing cars. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Well, I I, uh, I definitely feel good about the fact that you came up with an idea and found a need, and and um, uh, that's that's what it takes to get a business started. So uh, Dewey's got a question for hey, you. Hey, Tim, it's Dewey. Yeah, Dewey. Hey, thanks for sharing those stories. Um, you know, when you were sharing, I, I was thinking about, you know, the entrepreneur spirit, and I was thinking about business, and I was thinking about, you know, just failure in general. And uh, I just want to propose this question uh, in that context. Do you think uh, when when a business idea fails or something doesn't go right, um, I I know you feel kind of you know maybe read out by society or didn't know what worked, but you know it's really important from a business perspective that you you know recollect and you get your thoughts together and you move forward with some fortitude. So for the business people out there listening, I I know there's quite a bit of failures in the economy, but what can you give our listeners to uh, some inspiration regarding you know failure, moving forward with fortitude? And whatnot. First of all, I, I like to think of it this way. You know what I mean? If you if you're out there listening and you've had that job that didn't work out, that doesn't mean you failed at it. That just means you found something else. You're, you 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 found a successful way to get out of something that didn't work for you. Ah, and it's time like to learn from that. Because man, maybe there's a skill that you learned there that you can go and create a business with. You know, uh, we talk about uh, niches a lot in coaching, and we talk about the fact that you need to have a niche. And there was something that you did at that job that you were good at. And, you know, in the coaching industry now and in the consulting industry especially, there are so many businesses that are failing in so many little areas that if you've got that one little niche that you can consult or, you know, coach in, man, there's a huge success in that. If you just got to find those who are, uh, you know, who want to find out that information before they fail. You know what I mean? you got to use the failures that you went through to go, man, this is how I do it right. And go help the ones who are not being able to, to succeed where you have. That would be my answer to that question, Dewey. Oh, very good. So character building and uh, my mm-hmm. grandpappy always said, if, uh, if you learn from it, it's not a mistake or a failure. Right. That's right. So yeah. uh, you're you're right on in terms of success. So very good. Uh, you know, and, and we, you know, we talked a little bit uh, about this idea that you know, the end of the world's coming up, and um, how we're going to create uh, a new world. But if you think about it, exactly what Dewey you just asked me on so many people, they're facing that failure. You know, when you hit a failure like that, or you lose a job, you think it's the end of the world. Granted, I mean, the issues that, you know, I, I don't know the whole story of what went on up in the Northeast yesterday, but I'm betting that the person thought it was the end of the world, and he decided to take drastic actions in a way he shouldn't have. We all get to that point that we think it's the end of the world. When I, I got divorced, I thought it was the end of the world. Yeah. You know, the truth is, that's why we talk about now, 2013 is a brand new year. You know, every day you walk, wake up is a brand new day for you to recreate you know and um it's some of my rock and roll philosophies will jump in here gene simmons says it all the time from kiss every day above good ground is a good day (laughs) yeah that's very true and you know uh a lot of our listeners out there just to speak to you guys that are listening i know you can relate with this because uh, all of us have been through those times and in this economy there's many out there Tim, that are are relating with you, and they're going, yeah, yeah, I feel like that right now. And it's it, you know, it's not the end of the world. I know. I mean, if you know, if, if even with the political season, you know what I mean, we got done this past year. You know, we're a very um, we're a very divided country. So fifty percent of Americans feel like failures. No, you don't. Okay, you're not a failure. And no, no matter who won as president, there's just a chance for you to get up and build and work with it. You know. Success is working with what was given you. It's it's not working with getting the prime tools to be able to make it right. You have got to work with the tools that were given to you to succeed. Yeah, that's that that's good sound advice. Um, what's your take on the media? It seems like the media sometimes will you know glamorize what success is, and sometimes it's 
it's it's it's in such a way that it 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 says you know here's what's obtainable here's what you have to do what's successful and um, what's your uh, what, what's your take on the media as it presents success. You know, I think the media, uh, our news media today is more hungry for the failure, the downtrodden. Um, they're looking for the failures so they can exploit them. And I, I, I feel that personally. I don't watch a lot of news because of that. And uh, as far as the thing in success and what they teach, I'm a big movie watcher. I love to watch movies. I will watch some over and over again just be, to get a lesson out of it. But some of our movies now are are teaching success and they're teaching that it's that it's microwave success right i wish microwave success existed i'm going to tell you right now it's it doesn't you know if you want to start a business i'll be the first person in your corner to say hey let's do it but i'm also going to sit there and go hey listen you're in for a tough two years be ready you know it's success is the two years that gets out past that the media um you know that I think our media is portraying success in different levels now that um, in some cases they're helpful, in some cases they're hurting hurting Americans with it, I think. And it's, um, I can't think of the guy's name who was who was doing a show, a uh, TV show, I mean, and, and Dennis, I know you know Larry Broughton. Yes. In fact, he'll be a guest on our show here uh, in a few weeks. Working on getting him on my show too, but Larry uh, was on this on this guy's show, and I can't remember Donnie somebody or other on NBC, and that guy taught success after success, and he was looking for successful businesses like Larry's to be able to bring it into the spotlight. That is a show that's just I you know great, you know it's like you know we also know James Malinchek and watching him go on that uh, you know um, secret millionaire. That's right. a show that's teaching success and teaching people to breed success. Whereas, you know, many of people right now, they're not watching for that success. What they're watching for is, you know, the reality TV and to watch the screw-ups, the dramas, the failures, and the, me- the media is playing on that. Why? Because that's what the people are kind of hungry saying they want, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure with the reality TV stuff. Um, I've been behind the scenes of many of them. And uh, I don't think they're portraying success and portraying winning like they could in America. Yeah, I agree. And, in fact, I think about uh, when you talk about how there's no microwave uh, success, I think of all the, the, the junk email that I get that says, you know, this this lady from your city is making $20,000 a month after she just called this number. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I've called that number, too. <laughs> Are you making 20000 a month? That's incredible. I'm not going to say anything. I'm, I'm, I'm like the secret millionaire. I don't want the IRS to know. Who's <laughs> the one making emails? I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dewey's sending the emails out. <laughs> I'm a quick study. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you're absolutely right that uh, uh, that it is. it does take some hard work, and people need to realize that, especially these uh, what I like, to, I'm trying to coin a phrase, we'll see if it catches on, is these forced entrepreneurs. They're, they're kind of forced into it because they've got to create their own job. They, uh, they can't find one out there now. So uh, how, do they, how do they get their mindset into the fact that it's going to be some hard work and they're going to enjoy it? Um, do, you, do you want to touch on that a little bit about uh, trying to maybe do some things that they, how, how do they define their passion or is it something they can develop? I would say if you're a forced entrepreneur, I would not look for passion up front. As Good a point. forced entrepreneur, um, I mean, one of the things I encourage everybody I work with as my clients is they need to keep a job till they get something up and going. If you're a forced entrepreneur, you're looking for something for income. Right. You don't need to go after your passion first. You need to go after something that sells. I don't care what it is. And if it takes you selling, uh, you know, the, 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 what was the, the, um, gosh. The well, gin, just, Ginsu knives or something? <laughs> uh, jelly beans. Um, I'm just spitting here. Uh, Fuller brush. Uh, noodles. Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, <laughs> ornaments? Come on, stick with the theme. I am. Ornaments. I think so, Christmas theme. <laughs> did, we, did we lose you, Tim? Nah, we're, st- we're still with it. But hey, okay. you know, it's... <laughs> We lost him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was speaking technically. I thought we lost him on the uh, if sound. If you understand my silence, you understand my words. 
Well, hey, you know, I, I didn't say I was perfect on catching all the words, you know. Right, right. <laughs> no, I, I think your story that you told, though, about going door to door and, and, you know, finding out what needed to be done and doing it, that's truly, that may not have been your passion, but you uh, you rolled up your sleeves and did what needed to be done. Yeah, and that's there's the key. You got to do something to bring the income in. Right. Uh, I I work five years part time for Starbucks, and I'm going to tell you, you know, uh, I I think it was the I one of the e- posts we've seen recently is it was not beneath your relative your 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 ancestors to flip hamburgers. That's true. You know. I've always said that if I lost jobs and I was without, you know what I mean, I wasn't afraid to go do what I had to do. And I've worked at McDonald's, I've worked at Wendy's, I've worked at Roy Rogers, I've worked at Starbucks, I've worked at a local car wash, you know, I did whatever I had to do. I've delivered, I used to deliver the New York Times in Philadelphia. Wow. So, you know, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. job. Yeah, now that's, that's uh, doing whatever it takes is important, so... Hey, Tim, uh, we usually uh, say goodbye to our guests before this next break, but we'd love to keep you on for a little bit longer. Are you good with that? Yeah, I can stay around. Okay, good. Well, we're going to we're gonna take a break here, and then we're going to come back and talk to Tim some more. And I, I think we've just basically uh, whet everybody's appetite who is uh, trying to start a business. So let's, uh, let's bring you back, and uh, we will talk some more and get you guys motivated to get your business started. Thanks, Tim. We'll be back in a minute. For the California Dental Association, Christy Yamaguchi. As an Olympian and daughter of a dentist, I know the importance of having healthy teeth and a bright, healthy smile. Tooth decay is the number one childhood disease, more than asthma and obesity. That's why a new state law requires that kindergartners receive a dental checkup. So parents, prepare your children for school. Take your child to see a dentist. It'll make you smile too. For more information, call 800-CDA-SMILE. Do you suffer from the heartbreak of brain rot, feeling bored, sluggish, listless, not had a new idea in days? Using electronic gizmos without a clue why they work. Now there's help. Ham Radio, guaranteed to stimulate your corroding neurons and open a whole new world of excitement. To learn more about Ham Radio, go to helloradio.org. Side effects of Ham Radio usage include mental stimulation, desire for education, new career paths, understanding of technology, and cases of addiction have been reported. If you experience any of these symptoms, you're welcome. Ham Radio, it's not your granddaddy's radio anymore. They were outnumbered, out-equipped. They had no chance of winning, but they had one huge advantage. General George Washington. The fate of unborn millions will now depend, under God, on the courage and conduct of this army. We have to resolve to conquer or die. Just as the leadership of one man helped form a nation, today leadership can transform the world. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. It's like FM without the commercials. It's like XM without the quality. It's AM 1620, the Eagle Radio Network. Hey, welcome back to the Saturday Morning CEO and Ecom on Radio Show. Just want to uh, let our listeners know that if you have a question, you can email us at Question at SaturdayMorningRadio.com. That's question at SaturdayMorningRadio.com. Have have you sent an email uh, question in yet, Dennis? Yeah, I sent in my own question. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get an answer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be afraid of the answer I'd get. <laughs> well, hey, let's get back to Tim. Maybe he has some answers for us. You answers? I thought I was here to give you questions. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what it is. Well, send us an email, and uh, perhaps you'll get an answer yeah. <laughs> to your question. <laughs> well, uh, we, we were talking uh, before the break. Uh, we, we've got about uh, maybe five more minutes to spend with you here, Tim, before we move on to all our other uh, wacky stuff uh, that we've got planned for today. But uh, we had talked about these uh, forced uh, entrepreneurs that are having to start over. So have you have you got some tips for them, maybe? 
Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, we talked on the phone the last couple of days. I was thinking about that. S- tips that I have would to give them because of, like, I've been there. Yeah. Number one, we talked about, you know, I wouldn't go for a passion. I would go for what pays the bills. Get something that gets a, a steady income. Um, usually I coach people not to leave their jobs until they have a, bi- a business plan in, in action. Make a plan. As, and, I, I, you know, you've got to know how you're going to transition from that system that, um, the, whatever you had to do to, to make ends meet, then how, how to get out of it uh, and find your passion as a, as a business owner or uh, entrepreneur. Uh, understand that uh, a entrepreneur does not mean a job title. It is a lifestyle. Yeah, good point. Successful are people who love the challenges of life. They're not people who are looking for a paycheck. 90% of the entrepreneurs I know, they do. they don't work for money. They work for a challenge. You know what I mean? Money's just a side object mm. to them. Uh, but speaking of money, I would say get money in order. You know, uh, when we built our business, we got a uh, re- we built a real estate business first, so we have residual income coming in as long as the apartments are rented. Um, you know, then we were able to go off and build Rocker Life Coach because now we have a, a monthly income that far exceeds our expenses. But get your money in order because you are going to face challenges. You're going to face uh, things that you don't, you know, don't expect. Times, uh, no matter what you think it's going to cost you to have this business, extra expenses are going to come up. So, uh, with that, I would say is another thing that I hear a lot, and Dennis, I know you and I have heard a lot, is clean the clutter out. Right. If you don't need it, and you want to be an entrepreneur, get rid of it now because that'll be the biggest hindrance to you uh, being successful. I have a very fancy motorcycle, and actually, uh, Dennis, my my coach, which you know, um, Craig, I met w- with Craig last Saturday or Saturday two Saturdays ago. Here, he was here in East Texas with me, and he we sat on my motorcycle and we were talking about it. And I told Craig, I said, Craig, I love my bike, but I'm gonna let you know when it came time for me to hire you as a coach, I was willing to sell this bike to pay your coaching fee. Wow, because I know success. And I've been through the ups and downs in life, and I know that even though the success right there is, you know, you want uh, the bike is a success, I can give it up because I can get another one. Right. So understand that. Get rid of the clutter that you you don't know, have. Um, I would say start building an online presence with things like a blog, Facebook presence. You know what I mean? All the social media. You need to build a presence about your business, no matter what it is. It's got to be out and online. I started out with a blog. RockerLifeCoach.com started as a blog. That's all I started with. I just was blogging ideas. And those ideas turned into a daily thing, which gives me a ton uh, ton of people calling me all the time. You've got to do that. If you are going into the forced uh, forced, uh, entrepreneur, you need to build a schedule in your life. Because if you have been in a job, you've had structure. You are now in an unstructured field, and if you're not used to that, you're going to end up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Can't be lazy. No, that's important. I'll make a shameless uh, plug for my book, too. That's really what it talks about is focusing and meeting with yourself every week and making sure you're on that schedule. Yes. You, um, you, you get it, and then, you know what I mean? You, then you've got to really, you've got to find your dream. When you, when I say find that dream, you know, for me, it's I had to learn to even to narrow down the niche in my dream. I loved helping people. I had to understand what people I wanted to help and what ones I didn't want to help. And you got to become successful in that one little area, and you got to focus on that one little one. Once that becomes successful, you can build up in other areas. Too many people out there in that situation think they're going to help everybody. You've got to you've got to be narrow in it. It's just that's the way it is. So those Very are true. my tips. I appreciate it. Forced, uh, forced entrepreneur out of the CEO field, I should say. Yeah, it's uh, that. Those are great, great tips, and and we appreciate you being on the uh, on the air. And we talked a lot with you about coaching. And coming up next, we're going to have uh, our two minute coaching tip from Gary Lockwood, who is my personal uh, business coach and has been for years. So we're going to bring him on here with a, a two minute tip. And Tim, we want to thank you so much for sharing your story and i think you really helped inspire some of our listeners so thank you so much yeah thank you tim for coming out this morning um since entrepreneur is like such a challenge may i suggest that we send a few to washington dc yes we need a lot 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Hey, well, thanks, Tim. We'll talk to you later, and uh, I'll definitely see you somewhere around the globe. Uh, you and I run into each other quite a bit. We'll see you in the Lone Star State. Yeah, come on down to Texas, baby. Okay. Sounds good. I accept that invitation. You hear uh, that? We're just invited. Hey, let's do it. Well, All right. right. Let's do it. All right, talk to you later, Tim. Thanks. Bye. It's time for the two-minute tip from Gary Lockwood, the coach of all coaches, the mentor to the Saturday morning CEO. Gary Lockwood, give us your tip for today. Good morning. This is Gary Lockwood. Conventional wisdom says that you should work on improving your weaknesses. I say this is a waste of time, talent, and opportunity. Imagine what would have happened if Chopin, Einstein, Chris Everett, or Pavarotti had followed that conventional wisdom. All these people devoted their life to developing their natural strengths, and as a result, they each were tops in their field. Highly successful entrepreneurs, as well as top scientists, artists, athletes, and entertainers throughout history achieved greatness by focusing on their areas of strength. Everyone has a natural aptitude in something. Yes, even you have a special gift. You may be especially good at working with numbers, drawing pictures, teaching children, growing plants, or caring for those less fortunate than you. Your special talent may involve music, athletic ability, empathy, writing, or working with your hands. You are able to do some things better than I can and I can do some things better than you. Developing your natural talents is rewarding and motivating, allowing you to continually realize higher and higher levels of ability, achievement, and success. Invest your time and energy in being great at something, really great. You will be happier, And the recipients of your work, your customers, will reward you for your excellence. Play to your strengths. Experience the immense satisfaction that comes with being superb at something. Gary, you are a wealth of wisdom, and we sure appreciate you uh, coming on and giving us that two-minute tip every uh, every Saturday morning. You're uh, a piece of the furniture here now. You are the spring of wisdom. Ooh, I like that. Just kind of uh Does it bubble or does it flow like a river? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well thank you, Gary. Hey, we're gonna turn some time over to Dewey. Let's talk about some Hey uh, Dennis, we're back to the economies that will dominate in two thousand and fifty. Do you remember the last five we talked about? Starting I do. with the fiftieth? I, I just the only one I really remember was Portugal. <laughs> Portugal the is the fiftieth uh, economy that'll right. dominate in two thousand and fifty. Then comes the Czech Republic, Norway, United Arab Emirates, and Romania. Today we're going to be introducing Ireland and Israel. In 2050, Ireland will be in the 45th economy in the world. So let's look into that. What does Ireland have for us? Well, their income per capita is, wow, holy cow, I didn't know this. Their uh, income capita is $61,363. Ooh, I'm going to go to Ireland. I, You know, I have some, I'm three quarters Irish. And a quarter finish. Well, so. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you're finished. Okay, let's well, see. Well, <laughs> some, sometime I wish I were finished. But, hey, just for our listeners, you just got to take these uh, income per capita of the grain of salt because it's divided by their population, divided by their total income, yada, yada. So, obviously, larger economies like ours, which have about $313 million, we'd have a lower income per capita than Ireland. So Good point. So, keep that in mind. Uh, why is Ireland going to be ranked 45th in 2050? Why? Well, it has tremendous small population growth coupled with relatively <laughs> upbeat GDP. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> and huge gain in income per capita. All right. And I don't know if I, I don't know if I believe that. All right. Let's go on to Israel and then uh, we'll turn it over to you. Hey, the size of the economy uh, is about $402 billion. Income per capita is 37731 They're a small country and they'll see a population boom of 40% to nearly 11 million by 2050. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's Re- amazing. So how how big is Israel? It's about the size of New Jersey. <laughs> so how are you going to fit 11 people in the size of New Jersey? 
Anyway, all this information comes from the Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation that has given this report. So next week we'll talk about the 43rd and 42nd economy that will dominate in 2050. Of course, according to the Mayan, Mayan calendar, we're not going to make it that. Right. It, is that supposed to happen this week? Or are we going to be on the air still next week? But, uh, we still have one more show before the end of the world. Yeah, but you know that could be a total blackout. That's true. But uh, didn't NASA come up with something? Uh, oh yeah, NASA has repeatedly, repeatedly denied that the world's coming to an end. In fact, they're uh, claiming that's a misrepresentation of the Mayan calendar. So there is no doomsday. There's only new days ahead. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> news days. Just so. solar storms and meteors, folks. Hey, I just made an observation here. You know, we've got... Uh, the sky's falling. The sky's falling. <laughs> hey, I made an observation here. Well, you know, we've got Bing and Dave on this uh, same radio uh, station that Monday through Thursday do the Bad Morning Show, and uh, we've been playing some stuff back and forth with them, and uh, we put some uh, little parent advisory uh, uh, posters over some of their uh, maybe risque stuff that we we found on the walls. And I just now noticed that the the picture of Dewey and I, uh, they put a censorship <laughs> sign over it. So <laughs> you just noticed that? I just now noticed that, yeah. <laughs> well, the eyes have it. Yeah. <laughs> you see us peeking from behind it. So. Yeah, all, all that's showing is our uh, from our nose up. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so we got to give a shout-out to them. So, uh, hello, Bing and Dave. We love you guys. Hey, let's, uh, let's move on to some uh, wacky business ideas. Does that sound good to you? I like these wacky crazies. The loony I business love ideas. To comment on them, we're going to do some uh, some real laughing on these. That's <laughs> All right, let's start off with some reef balls. Even even the name just makes you already start to laugh. Doesn't <laughs> I it? They say reef fried beans. Yeah, <laughs> reef fried <laughs> reef balls. Uh, <laughs> Eternal Reefs Incorporated. In uh, Decatur, Georgia, I uh, created memorial reefs uh, by making a person's cremated remains part of a reef ball. Uh, the reef ball is then placed into the ocean and becomes part of a new or existing reef. Is that exciting? Uh, the company also says that uh, uh, it's available for pets, too, and they call it the True Living Legacy. That sounds like a buoyant idea. Oh, <laughs> Boy, we're going to have a ball with this one, I can tell. <laughs> well, let's keep it at floating. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> ashes to ashes, balls to balls, I think. Now, are these, uh, are these uh, reef balls, are they organic? Or do they, uh... They're made from ashes, so they would be organic. All right, just checking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how long they were going to float. I know. <laughs> hey, you. while you were working on your paper last week, uh, we, we brought up the... Uh, I just got to re-mention this, and I crossed it off because I wasn't going to redo it, but I just had to laugh too much. Uh, you can rent a cow uh, in <laughs> in Switzerland uh, if you wanted to have your own milk and cheese, but you didn't want to go to the store. <laughs> you could actually have somebody bring by a cow for a period of time, and uh, you can milk it and uh, have your own milk and cheese. So uh, uh, o- Ezor, who, uh, who rents the cows out in Switzerland, says the animals are very calming. And we hope it gives people a, a little perspective of where their milk comes mm, from. Mm. Interesting. All right. Uh, while we're on animals, uh, let me tell you about this other business idea in Japan, uh, the cat cafes. Now that could uh, that could be that sounds like a business in Vegas, but uh, <laughs> this is actual with cats. Uh, they find that spending time with animals is soothing. So in cities such as uh, Tokyo and Osaka. Uh, cat cafes are places where customers they come in and they can sip some tea and they just pet the residents' cats. Uh, they're becoming increasingly popular. Uh, some cafes are uh, reservations are recommended on the weekends because they they get pretty busy. Uh, <clears throat> the flavor of uh, visiting the uh, uh, cat cafe is uh, just like uh, a soothing feeling. Uh, Jane Aldridge uh, has taken a bunch of photos in uh, cat cafes. Uh, the Calico Cat Cafe, in, in fact, in Tokyo, uh, has a website that you can go to and, and look at the pictures of people petting cats. How soothing. I think they're all on sake. 
<laughs> what, what cat kind of tea are they drinking? Cafe. It's a catnip tea. <laughs> you, know, I just, you like that? Yeah, I did. That, that was a good one. Good, good. Uh, hey, gosh, we're still on animals. How's this one? Uh, mowing goats. Well, you did say something about themes this morning. I, I know. I, I, we just had to figure out your logo. We're going animal style this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to purr. <laughs> ruff, ruff. I'm, I'm more a dog guy. Oh, you're a dog cafe. <laughs> yeah. The dog diner. There you go. <laughs> oh, I like that. New business idea. Those of you out there right now going, what the heck could I do? <laughs> Your doggy pet the bone. <laughs> That's right. And help out the uh, SPCA or ASPCA. What's it called? <laughs> Go ahead. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the dog hat and dog shelters. The uh, ASPCA or something, whatever they are. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm really losing it this morning. Anyway, uh, start your own job. <laughs> May I suggest you stay off the catnip? <laughs> what's what's in this tea that you passed me here? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> well, if if all you're doing is sitting and listening to us laugh and letting the grass grow under your feet, and uh, and you need the grass mowed, uh, why why in the world would you get something stupid like a lawnmower when you can uh, rent mowing goats? Uh, Google is uh, surely the most famous user of mowing goats. Did you know that? Google uses goats to mow their grass. I didn't know Google had grass. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's short grass. It's Google grass. <laughs> <laughs> Google grass. <laughs> it's, we got Google Voice and Google Search. And ah, why not? Have some Google, Google grass. grass. <laughs> Google goats while you're at it. I, Google grass, I don't think it got legalized in California. but <laughs> Anyway, they have a herd of about 200 goats that... Mow the fields around their California headquarters. Uh, you can see the official Google blog about it. Uh, there's certainly uh, <laughs> not the only ones either. Uh, mowing goats are a lot more eco-friendly than the standard weed whacker and pesticide approach to weeds and long grasses. So if you are having a problem with grass, <laughs> it just seems to keep reaching for the sky, then, uh, then you might want to bring a goat in, or a herd of goats, I should say. For a tax deduction... You know, I'm, I'm curious to now, now that you piqued my curiosity, I, I wonder if they're, uh, how big their lawn is, number one. Number two, do is that zone for agriculture? Ah. I mean, 200 goats, yeah, that's quite a bit of goats, if you think about it. So I think if they're just visiting, they can come in on green cards. They don't have to be residents. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they produce their own green cards. It, yeah, the, zo- <laughs> the zoning laws allow them to just pass through. <laughs> hey, uh, when I, you know, most people know this. I, I grew up on a chicken ranch. We had a family on a chicken ranch up in Oregon, exactly. and our, our, our neighbor had goats. Okay, and I tell you what, those goats. I mean, this they'll eat anything. Well, go, you know, I have a goat and a sheep, and my uh, I have found that goats uh, are pickier eaters than sheep. They'll leave all the real gnarly weeds, but the sheep will just eat them. They don't care. They're they're more. Or less uh, less picky than goats. So then you should have sheep mowing your lawn. I, yeah, I've only got one, so I probably need some sheepers, more more sheepers. Oh, hey, oh, we're going to run out of time here. We don't have three hours. I still this say the lawnmower is the most effective, most efficient device to get the job done. I don't know. It has a lot of gas. <laughs> well, we're we're still fossil fuel dependent. Well, so y- you want to go there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about my three in one gasoline. <laughs> uh, that's an oil, well-oiled machine there. Hey, we've got about thirty seconds here, so I better maybe I'll save this next one for uh, for next time. And I'll just remind you of another one we had last week. Was the uh, uh, <laughs> we we left laughing on this one, and you missed it. So I will re reintroduce the uh, testicular implants for pets. So if you've had your pets neutered and, and they don't look like all the other dogs out there, then you can have implants put in. Uh, <laughs> Nudicles.com, in case you're wondering where to get them. All right, that's it for the show today, and you probably don't want to hear any more from us anyway. Have a great day. Hey, Merry Christmas, everybody, and thanks for listening. Thank you. Merry Christmas, and happy old year for a couple more weeks.